In this video, I want to talk about the essential controls you need to use during your Zoom classes. And you can see already that I have a meeting active here and I have two volunteers connected in this case. And I'm going to come back to all this in a minute and explain how all of this works. So we're going to start with the uh, basic controls that you have on your control panel. So your control panel is down along the bottom here. So this is what you're going to be using mostly to control all of your Zoom activity. And you can see on the bottom left hand corner here, I have a microphone symbol and the volume is going up and down. So here I can mute my microphone. I can unmute. And if my microphone is muted, I can use the space bar on the computer to temporarily unmute. It's very, very handy. Um, again, you know, I'd recommend that, uh, especially in larger meetings, that you have your microphone muted at uh, all times when you're not speaking. So very, very handy feature. Another little setting here regarding the audio is if I click on the little arrow here next to the icon, I have a number of different um, options here. So if I'm using an external microphone, for example, I can select it from the list. Again, if I uh, if I have issues with hearing what's going on in the meeting, maybe I need to select a different speaker. So this could be my uh, computer speakers or this might be my headphones if I have headphones attached. Um, again, I can use test speaker and microphone here. If it's a meeting that I've um, set up myself and I have the meeting open, maybe I don't have any participants, I can test my audio settings uh, here uh, just before the meeting starts. So very, very handy set of settings. I might just click on this audio settings here just so you can get a quick look at the settings tab. So you can see here um, I have my input level coming in here and I can also select where and which audio device I am using uh, for this particular meeting. So this is the settings tab. We'll be coming back to this again in a minute's time. Close this up. So next to the audio, we have our video tab. And at the minute, you can see that my video is uh, muted as such. So I'm going to start this. So hello, you can see me here. At the minute, I have a virtual background going on here, and I'm going to explain what this is in a minute. Uh, but for, for the moment, I'm just going to turn off the video again. And for the most part, it'll be off during this meeting because it could be quite distracting if I'm talking about the various um, settings that we have in our panel down below here. OK. So uh, let's have a look at some of the general video settings we have. So next to the start video button, we have this uh, small little icon here. And first thing to note here is that we can select a camera. So if I have um, a webcam, a separate webcam or an external camera of some sort, I can select that here. I can also choose a virtual background. So this is an interesting one. And you would have seen my video pop up here where I have a virtual background. Now. This is the actual background I have in the office at the minute. And it's a nice plain white background. And this is perfectly good for delivering classes as well. Uh, I would recommend that you use something non-distracting. If you're in a space where there's other things going on in the background, um, if you might have bookshelves or other things like that, using a virtual background could be an option for you. So I have a number of different backgrounds here. Uh, I have a GRATB one here. I have a, a, a nice looking office uh, image. Uh, I also have the Cliffs of Moher for my tour guiding classes. Um, so there's a few options there uh, in terms of controlling the appearance of your video uh, to the classroom. Now we are in the settings tab here. So once you've opened this, um, it's worth noting what we have here on the left hand side. So you've got your general settings. Again, for most people, the default settings here are going to be absolutely perfect. Um, and you may not need to uh, do much in this area at all. So we're just in our video settings there. Audio settings, you can see we've talked a bit about this. I can see my input level here for my microphone. I can also do things here like test my speakers and or select the output for um, for the Zoom meeting. So this could be selecting a, a set of headphones instead of the speakers on the laptop. If uh, I want to do that, I can do that here. And we've also got options here for sharing screen and chat and virtual backgrounds and all that other kind of stuff here. Again, for the most part, the default settings here in Zoom are perfectly adequate. And for the most, most people will not need to adjust anything in here. 
One thing that might be worth noting, and we'll talk about recording classes uh, in, a, in a few minutes time, uh, you can select here the location of your class recordings. So, and you can set a different folder if you don't want to go to the default Zoom folder. So I'm gonna close this up. And we're gonna be looking in a little more detail at some of the Zoom settings and preferences that you can set uh, online, uh, as well as in Zoom. And um, we're gonna do that in a separate video. So for now, I want to talk a little bit about some of the options we have down below here in our meetings. The first one here is the security options. So I'm gonna click on the security button and there's, there's several options here that are very, very useful during your Zoom meetings. The first one on top here is lock meeting. So once everybody has joined your class and you don't want to allow any other participants to join the meeting, you can click on lock meeting here. So you've locked the meeting and no one else can join. I'm gonna undo that. Again, you know, if someone is coming late to a meeting, they won't be able to join if you have that uh, button pressed. But again, it could also be a way of um, controlling, you know, how many participants are entering and that kind of thing as well. So the other option we're looking at here is enable waiting room. And what that means is that as participants uh, click on that link in their email to join the class, they're put into a waiting room. Now, the benefit of this is um, it helps prevent unwanted people from joining your meeting. So if, for example, um, somebody outside of the class got the uh, link somehow to the class and uh, were trying to join the meeting, as many of you may have heard, Zoom was having some issues, uh, security issues a while back with random people managing to join meetings. This waiting room feature should prevent all of that um, because it allows the host of the meeting to control who enters uh, the meeting. So as you can see, I have waiting room enabled. And if I look at participants up in the top right hand corner here, I can see I have two participants here waiting to join my class. And I can simply click on admit or even admit all. So this can be very, very handy if you have um, if you have a large class of people, um, maybe 20 or 30 students, you can wait for all of those people to uh, enter the waiting room and admit them all at the same time starting your class on time. So we come back down here to security. So a few other options we have here. Uh, we have allow participants to share screen, chat, rename themselves, unmute themselves. So a few things are gonna change here um, by default. Again, depending on the class uh, that you're running, you may want students to share screens for presentations. Uh, in that case, you would want to enable that feature. Um, you may want to enable chat. And again, there's, there's other chat settings that you can implement, uh, which will basically control how uh, the students can either communicate with each other or communicate with you, the tutor, during a meeting. Um, so again, it's good to have that enabled. So do you want students to be able to rename themselves? Possibly not. Uh, do you want them to be able to unmute themselves? Yes, you do. So if you're having trouble with a particular participant or if there's a disruption in the classroom for some reason or another, you can remove participants as well. So if I click on remove participants, you can now see in the top right hand corner here, I can choose who I want to remove from the meeting. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is click on the participants button. And what this does, just to show you what this does, this opens up the tab on the, on the right hand side here where I can see the list of participants. So this is everybody who is in my current classroom. So if I uh, click on the little button next to participants, I can choose to invite. So if for example, there is someone is having difficulty connecting from the original link, or if I want to invite additional participants to my meeting or to my classroom, I can click on this button here and I can go through the invitation process, again, using my email or copying the invitation link and messaging it or whatever other way I want to invite people to join the class. If you want more details on uh, scheduling meetings and inviting um, students to the classroom, to the online classroom, you can check out the other videos on um, scheduling class meetings as well. Another option here worth noting under participants is the mute all button. So one of the fantastic things about Zoom is you can uh, control 
um, you can control to a certain degree uh, people's use of uh, audio and video. So if I click on the mute all button, it will mute all current and new participants. So allow participants to unmute themselves. You can choose to turn that on or off. As the host, you can control that feature. Very, very handy feature. And I would generally recommend that uh, for classes as they start, that uh, people enter the classroom muted. Um, it just helps to avoid any unwanted um, distracting audio uh, as classes begin. So I'm gonna click mute all in this particular case. Another thing worth noting here is I can, this is me here, Jerry TV, I'm the host. So I, again, I can mute myself up here and I have a little option here to go more. I can rename or I can edit my profile picture. So you can see here, I have a profile picture here, which is just the GRETB logo. For students, if I want to unmute a student, I can uh, roll the mouse over their name and I can click on unmute. Uh, I can also um, ask them to start video. So if I click unmute here, so now uh, the student there is unmuted. I'm going to click mute again. Again, I can ask to start video. I can make a host. I can allow record. Uh, I can put in waiting room. I can remove and I can report. So there's a number of different options available to me here for each participant uh, in the meeting. Okay, so the next option we want to look at here is the chat function. So the chat function, um, what that does is if I click on this button, you see that a panel is opening up here on the right hand side. So what this chat function allows you to do is it allows you to share links uh, or files with all the class participants. Very, very handy. You can um, add files if you want to share PDFs or other files related to the class. You can do that here or important links um, via the Internet. You can type messages here to all of your participants. So again, you can communicate with everybody at once or you can decide to communicate with individuals in the class uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. So as you can see here, I have everybody selected. If I click on this little tab here, I can see my list of participants. So I've only got two participants in my Zoom meeting at the minute, so I can choose one and send them a message privately. Very, very useful if uh, you need to just to speak one-to-one -one with students. Now, generally, when I'm running a class, I ask students to communicate. Uh, as I'm delivering a class, I ask students to communicate with me uh, privately by chat if they have a query, and then I can get back to them, rather than um, people being able to uh, sp speak out in the classroom. Unless, of course, I'm asking for feedback or responses. So that is the chat function. So one other thing here worth noting, uh, and one of the benefits of the participants panel, is you can see and troubleshoot um, other people's connections. So I can see here that uh, Quiva Morley here has no audio device connected um, and her video is turned off. So if, for example, a student is struggling to connect or partake in a meeting, um, you as the host should be able to help somewhat in directing them uh, to whether it's their audio or video that is not connected to the meeting. And that's something that they can hopefully troubleshoot in their uh, audio and video settings that we looked at earlier on. So that's it for um, some of the basic controls. Uh, we've looked at the security participants chat function. We're gonna have a look at the screen sharing function in the next video. And um, we're going to do that uh, in a separate video. And we're also going to look at the record function. So for those of you who want to uh, record your classes and maybe look at sharing them uh, online to your uh, learner management systems.